Dragon technology is a combination of AMD Phenom 2 processors, ATI Radeon HD graphics, and AMD 7 series chipsets. This technology allows you to build incredibly powerful PCs for multimedia entertainment, for gaming, and for advanced multitasking. Today we're going to do it ourselves, we're going to build a system from scratch in less than an hour. The Dragon system that we'll be building will be employing an AMD Phenom 2 X4 955 processor. We'll also be using a graphics card from Gigabyte based on ATI Radeon HD 4870 graphics, and a motherboard using the AMD 790FX chipset from ASUS. The right way to open up a system is to simply slit out the bottom of the box carefully, take the chassis box, and simply lift it. Let's take a look at all the components we need to build this PC system. We need a chassis. In this case, it's a full tower chassis, easily upgraded and expanded. We'll need our processor, our AMD Phenom 2 X4 955 processor. We'll need a heat sink and fan. We'll need a hard drive, a video card, memory, our motherboard, an operating system, and a power supply. With these components, we'll be able to build this system from scratch. To build the system, we'll begin by opening up the chassis, inserting the power supply, the disk drives, and then we'll insert our motherboard and the components which then are inserted into the motherboard. To insert the power supply, we'll simply employ four screws secured against the back of the chassis. The fan sucks air in from the chassis and blows it out through the back of the chassis. Simply slide it in, line it up with the screw holes, and we'll screw that in. Next we'll install our drives. We'll install an optical drive and a hard drive. In this case I have to unscrew the front face plates to install my optical drive. With the front face plates removed, I can now easily install the optical drive sliding in through the front. Unlike the power supply which used coarse threads, this optical drive uses fine thread screws often found with your chassis. To secure the drive and properly install other components, we'll also need to take off the opposing side of the chassis. Now the optical drive is fully installed. Next we'll install the hard drive into one of the removable bays of the chassis, which are easy to remove. We install hard drives into the removable bay and then simply reinsert them. To install the hard drive into the removable bay, I'm able to simply slide the hard drive into this bay and then I align the screw holes and I can screw it in. Now I'll reinsert the hard drive bay, and the hard drive is now secure inside the chassis. This is the hard drive interface. It's called Serial ATA, or SATA for short. We simply insert it, and that's how the data moves between the hard drive and the system. We'll also install a SATA power adapter from the power supply, and that'll complete the connection of the hard drive. This is a modular power supply, and as you can see, I can plug in each cable appropriate to my devices. This is a SATA power connector. I insert one end into the back of the power supply, and I'll insert the other end into the back of the hard drive. Before you install a motherboard, it's important to install the motherboard jack backplate. The backplate inserts from the inside of the system, and by gently applying force, it then pops into place. The next step in installing a motherboard is to install the spacers. The spacers are critical because they provide an interface between the motherboard and the metal plate below. I'll first mark the holes which apply to my specific motherboard with a little marker, and then we'll screw in the spacers. We'll then be prepared to insert the motherboard. I'll align my motherboard with the chassis, and I'll begin to mark the holes. We'll now insert the spacers into the appropriate holes. We'll hand tighten them, and then we'll give them an extra turn with the tool.
Now we'll insert the motherboard. We'll align the jacks with the back plate that we installed earlier, and we'll gently place it on top of the spacers. And we'll now use coarse grain screws to secure the motherboard. Now that the motherboard is in place, we'll begin to insert components and wire the board. This motherboard includes handy spacers for the chassis connectors. These chassis connectors include the reset switch, the hard drive lights, and other important switches. This chassis also includes a multifunction connector. It includes a firewire connector, a USB connector, and audio, all accessible from the front panel of the chassis. We can simply install these into the motherboard and they'll allow us to use those built-in connectors towards the front of the chassis. Here's the connector for audio. Firewire. And external USB.